Well, hello, YouTube modeling community. That's right. It's the fat man from Alabama coming to you from Don's Garage. Okay, this video was 24 plus hours late going up. Technical difficulties last night, and I have pretty much felt like dirt most of the day. Y'all's comments in the videos have helped that tremendously. So, I got everything together, and here it is. We're going to do a video, another video on the... This is kind of a generic video. This is how to build a truly straight front axle. Uh, when I did the video on the 34 forward showing how to take the 32 Revell drop tube axle and lower it even more, there was a question asked how I would add leafs to it to make a gasser buggy spring axle. So I said, well, you know, it's a real good idea to just do a video on it versus trying to answer the question. I can't type that well, and there'd be a lot of typing to answer it, to answer it as thoroughly as I think I should. So anyway, <clears throat> here's a video. What I've done, uh, was looking through pictures of gasser uh, cars of the late 50s, early 60s, early maybe mid 60s. Uh, anywhere where there was a buggy spring. Now buggy spring means this. Arches over the axle with a center mounting point. Now, you could take, this is the 32 axle straight off the chrome tree. I have it not modified one little bit. Let's see if this little black background will help me. Um, when it mounts to the chassis in the 32, it glues here, and then you've got a couple little tabs in the chassis marked where this, these two points kind of line up into. That keeps it good and sturdy, where it doesn't rock left or right, gets keeps it good and flat. <coughs> Sorry, fellas. Alright, here's a slightly modified 32 Ford frame from the Revell kit. Now here, I've notched it. That's for the single leaf buggy spring to get it down in the weeds. Now, we're going to use this one because I don't really have another chassis that I can readily available to use for demonstration but this will work so what I done first like I said you've seen the stock one the kit stock one I took one of those another one I've got a lot of extras um, I cut need that back over here I cut the buggy spring off there it is just like it is to go in the kit I take that, I, might, I use my micrometers, the tube axle is 80 thousandths of diameter, 2 inch axle. So, not, hmm, nothing more, well, get it around here, nothing more than some evergreen 80 thousandths rod, part number 212. And Hobby Lobby does have that. I've seen it there. In fact, I think I've bought some. Anyway, I carefully, I cut the axle off actually in like three pieces. Um, I cut the spindles. Well, let's get the yeah, air. Well, let's get things centered up. I cut the end of that. I cut the axle off right at the uh, shock mount down here on the tube. Cut both ends off, saved them. Then... I just took my simple little razor saw and carefully, there's a flat, kind of a flat mount right there that's part of the axle. I cut that in two, cut, cut the remainder of the axle off and saved the spring. Before I done that, I did measure the uh, width of the axle hub hub to hub or well kingpin I guess you'd call it anyway measured it come out to be five millimeters so took a piece of eighty thousandths plastic rod 
and I cut it just a little over five millimeters so I had a little adjustment room to make I have I have traced out it's marked there's the center of the axle this is the outside edge of where the spring will land here and it will land here Now what we'll do, this will glue in, hmm, get this kind of pinched together, as such, anyway, it is going to glue right there, alright, that gives me a whole lot of raise in the front end right there, right off the bat. It'll gain probably three inches of lift. What that should translate into, what we're going to do here, we're going to take a quick minute and we're going to glue this piece on. That way, it'll be easier to demonstrate and I'm not trying to handle half a dozen parts. Now, I do not use my glue straight out of the tube, bottle, canister, whatever handle, whatever name you want to give it. I keep little pieces of cardboard or whatnot. This is the glue I use. This is the glue I use from Hobby Lobby. I prefer the medium. Really don't care for the thin. I'll put a little puddle, pick it up with my toothpick, and there in the area that I've cleaned up, I'll put a little there. And we will put a little here. I use a toothpick simply because. I can't control the bottle, never have been. Uh, that's what my ex-wife used to say, I couldn't control the bottle. Anyway, we will. I've also drawn, ooh, well, I'm getting dizzy now. I've also drawn a center line. See if it'll focus. Anyway. There it is. You see a little pencil line down the middle all the way end to end? That's the center of the tube. That's my marking point to kind of assist me in locating the spring center of the axle. Now this part, I will usually glue my fingers to the part at least once. And it is a fudge off to one side and I mean just slightly now this is for demonstration purposes only but and I'm not a big fan of using kicker if you apply the glue you want it thin enough to dry thick enough to hold and it's a happy medium and that's something you just kind of got to get a feel for um, but there it is that's a good start to a raised front axle. Let me flip it around here on my little T-handle to hold it and we're going to put a background to it so you can get a better idea of exactly what I'm talking about. There. And there it is. You can see the pencil line there. It's the center of the t uh, piece of rod. Uh, my spring's a little off center but we'll live with it. Again, for demonstration purposes only. Now, let's take, yeah, we got this 34 Ford frame. So I haven't cleaned up a whole lot since last night, the 34 Ford video. Anyway, there it is, fellas. Well, let me get my big meat hook kind of out of the way. And let's darken the back. See how much lift. Let's get the measuring stick. And I'll give you an idea just how much lift we got out of it. The axle stock drop tube puts the axle center mount of the wheel about middle of the chassis. 
this brings the center all the way down to eight inches, no, seven inches below the bottom of the frame rail. That's a lot of lift. All right, fellas, I'm going to close this video and do a second part right behind it. Stay tuned. There will be a second. There's a second part to this coming very soon. Stay tuned.